Hi, welcome back to the Holy Health Podcast. I'm Mitch. And I'm Amanda, and this is episode 16. Today we're going to be taking a deep dive into some religious conversations, some paradigm shifts, potentially, um, Christianity, and how we can navigate through these interesting times that we're experiencing, and um, other things that are developing in the in the world of faith, we'll say. Um, so we'll kind of start the conversation with where me and Amanda at are at currently with this. Um, so Amanda, I'll let you take the floor. So this has been something that came up more so for us, when would you say? A couple months ago. Um, something that you've been developing into over the past few months. Would you agree? Yeah, I've been on a very specific journey um, developing my Christianity. Yeah, and I'm not on the same path necessarily. So it's something that we have been uh, having a lot of difficult conversations around. And talking about in a variety of ways and uh we had a conversation i don't know a week or two ago probably where we were talking about i can't remember something i can't remember specifically what we were talking about but i kind of framed it as okay this is something that we were seeing as like a negative thing our spiritual differences we're seeing this as a bad thing a hard thing a negative thing but what if we can see the differences as a positive thing? Because everybody sees it as like a bad thing, a deal breaker type of thing. But what if we see it differently and use that as a superpower, essentially? Mm -hmm. Like the old saying, my strengths are my weaknesses and my weaknesses are my strengths. Exactly. Yeah. So um, after that, realization I feel like there was a shift what do you think yeah I think just you know for me personally um reading and navigating through what I've been learning I've been reading the New Testament um I've been trying to understand the Gospels more and you know actually reading the word which is really important as a Christian um and just kind of like talking to you, talking to other people, and just trying to have a better understanding on how to approach people, and learning from you a lot, pretty much, and, uh, you know, like you always say, meeting people where they're at, and I've heard a lot of other people also say that, um, especially coming from the health field, like if someone approaches me, you know, for personal training, you know, I have to meet them where they're at to get them to where they want to be, you know? And, you know, we can apply that to a lot of other things, too, in life. And, you know, we've talked about this before with different concepts, but I would say that's something that I've learned over the conversations that we've had is, like, we want to, or I want to be with you on the journey and I don't want to push my specific belief system onto you it's like a self-discovery thing yeah because I would say like so when we first got together you were not necessarily devoted to your religious path like you are now yeah I was not no all, really no so like I was just starting then, long, like, longer into the relationship, you began to become more serious with it and, like, hardcore. And you would, like, come at me in some ways and, like, not meet me where I am. And that's, like, a big thing for me that, like, I stand by and stick by is, like, you have to meet people where they're at, regardless of, like, what you truly believe. Like, you will completely turn somebody off of what you're trying to say. And you could probably even be saying the same thing just in different ways. 
But if you're not willing to be open-minded and receptive enough to respect the other person and where they're at on their own personal journey, then, like, you are going to create further division and almost alter, potentially alter, them coming closer to what you are trying to get them to come closer to. Yeah, and that's something that we don't want to do. No. We don't want to create more division. We're trying to create unity and get people to come together. And, like, I've I heard a lot, a lot of famous people talk about, you know, the benefits of living in America and kind of, like, where we came from. It's like, you know, it's okay to not agree. Like, we don't have to agree on everything, but we can still work together for the common good and the greater good. Like, that's what America was founded on, is understanding our our, uh, our disagreements and then putting our disagreements aside to work towards the greater good of things. And, you know, you can kind of say the same thing about this situation it's like, okay, yeah, we, we might have some differences here, but we can still work together. And what I think is cool about this, and I know maybe a lot of other people that might be in our same situation, like we've talked about, uh, where you know, maybe the wife is going to church and the husband's at home and you know, he doesn't want to go, or vice versa, or the mom of the family is the only one that's going to church and Nobody else in the family is going and whatever the situation is, there's somebody in the family or in the relationship that is pursuing some type of religion and nobody else is. And, you know, that can be really frustrating for people. And that's like, we want to try to understand those differences. And like for me and you... I think we have the capability to really reach a lot of people. And the way that you speak about things is way different than the way I speak about things. But together, we can reach your people and we can reach my people. And we can kind of maximize the outreach that we can have with our different ways that we articulate our belief system. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, that's also another way to like bridge the gap between like Christians and other spiritual people, because I feel like there's a big gap for the most part there. Um, Maybe not in general, but when it comes to speaking about uh, spiritual things, religious things, like there's a huge gap between being able to do that with each other when you're not both identifying as one thing. Yeah, there's, <clears throat> like, we can kind of get into that conversation a little bit, but there's, like, there's stigma attached to everything in the religious world because everybody wants to be right and everybody pushes their beliefs onto everybody else. Like, like basically what I was doing to Amanda before was... You know, once I started learning certain things about Christianity, then I was like, oh, I got to I gotta make sure Amanda's doing this too. And then I started pushing my beliefs onto her. And I was like, I was really coming at her pretty hard. For sure. <laughs> um, Which doesn't go well. No, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, ground made there. I wasn't very receptive to that method. No. Um <laughs> But it was a great learning experience, and we worked through it, yeah. and the conversations come up several times, mm-hmm. because it takes failure to learn how to talk to somebody, and like to work through that thing. For sure. I mean, it's made our relationship even stronger and way better, because of the conversations that we've had surrounding this. Like, they were, they sucked at the time, and it was like not great, but I think it's made everything way better. Mm-hmm. Like pushing that on to other people is something that we don't want to do because then everyone's fighting to be right. But truly, nobody knows what's right. 
nobody knows what the the one hundred percent truth is, like an absolute truth. Like as Christians, we think we know. We think we know the absolute truth, and what gives Christianity a bad name, I think, is those people that take that absolute truth and use it as power and hold it over other people and like use it to to validate themselves with like what they're doing compared to what other people are doing so like i don't know if i said that correctly or not but they're like i mean it's it's yeah i I, I think i understand um it's like try to re- reiterate somebody that. who goes to church every week and is like a good christian they believe and they know that they're a good christian person and then they look down upon people who are not on their level and like par- doing the same thing that they're doing as like oh you're less than me essentially or i'm judging you because you're not participating in these things that i personally no to be right yeah like this is the only way to be and if you are not this way then i'm gonna look down upon you and judge you because you're not doing the same thing is that what you mean yes yeah yeah like yeah they're doing that because they think they know the absolute truth yeah which you know can be argued on a lot of different ways and i would say the main thing about that is like as a Christian we definitely shouldn't be doing that we shouldn't be looking and judging what other people are doing we should be leading by example first and foremost like that's what that's what anybody should do on all aspects of life let alone a religious conversation leading by example is one of the most important things that you can do in life again yeah, it's the most powerful too yeah, because other people are going to, I think we talked about it last week, resonate with that 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 frequency of like, oh wow, that person, that person is up leveling themselves. They heighten their consciousness, like they are they are improving themselves. Look at them; they're happy, they're joyful, they're at peace. They are totally a different person. I wonder what they're doing. And then, whenever that happens, then you can game ground you can tell them your experience and they can be like oh wow that's that's pretty cool they had that experience and then you can grow from there you build a relationship and then you know you can you, you're spreading the good word and getting other people to join in yeah it's like what would you call i don't know what you could call it uh so like from my perspective it's like Exuding what you are receiving from the teachings that you're consuming and living in that way instead of verbally putting that onto others. So it's like, I'm going to live in this way that these teachings tell me to do and that I believe are correct instead of being like, oh, why didn't you go to church this week? You should have went to church this week. Like, if you are living by example and um, taking action on the things instead of just verbally feeling like you're making a difference, like, you can make many more strides than doing it verbally. Mm -hmm. Because that's like belittling somebody. Yeah, and that's like a total turnoff. Like, that's what is, I think, I can't speak for everybody, of course, but I think that's like a lot of people's, like, that's why a lot of people shy away from Christianity and like the Bible and the teachings in within it because of the people who are doing that, which are many in For churches. Sure. There's a there's a lot of people that are um, fans, but they don't actually do the work. Yeah, and like. I think, like, you don't go to church. Nope. So why don't you go to church? Um, well, it's on Sunday, and <laughs> I work, and I don't believe that 
I have to go to the mechanical church that everybody goes to on Sunday morning. Um, whenever two or more people are gathered, God is there, and you can fellowship with your with your people if there's two or more people. Like me and you right now, we're sitting in front of each other. We could be in church right now, you know, and I think that's one of the things that the that the church doesn't understand and that Christians don't understand is that one, the Sabbath day doesn't have to be on Sunday, and two, church doesn't have to be inside of four walls on Sunday or Wednesday or wherever you go to church. Like, church can be out on the wilderness, and church can be with five people that you're hanging out with that day and you're talking about God and Jesus and all the things that you've been learning about and you give a little spiel about whatever to your friends and maybe there was, you have a good conversation. Like I did that um, with my brother's friend. We stayed up till like midnight one night and he was he's kind of an atheist and we basically talked about God and religion for like two hours. Like that's church for me. And I always say I can go to church between my ears. Like there's nothing holding me back from talking to God and reading the Bible and fellowshipping with my fellow man on a daily basis. You know? Because the Sabbath a Sabbath day is supposed to be a day of rest. And I think there's a misconception that oh it's gotta be on Sunday. That's the seventh day, you know. God rested on the seventh day, so it had to have been on Sunday. Like, I don't think it ever says that in the Bible that it has to be on Sunday. Sabbath day just means that you have to have a day of rest. Like, whether that's Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, it can be any day. But it's important to have a day of rest because it's good for your mental health. It's good for you to relax. You can plan for the rest of your week. You can decompress from all the stress of your the other six days and you can get closer to God on that day you can do whatever you want on that day but like it's very important to have a rest day from all of your busy hustle and bustle life things that you're doing um, and God knew that and he tells you to do it so what makes you better than God if you're not taking a rest day even God took a rest day um, so yeah there, I, th I think there's a lot of misconceptions and misunderstandings of things um, with the church that um, can be that other people look to others as like oh well you're wrong you know you don't go to church you can't be a Christian if you don't go to church you're supposed to be you know finding I forget what they call it a body or something find or fellowship with a body or an entity or something like that I forget the exact verbiage, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just think that I don't have to go on Sunday at 10 o'clock to sit in a pew and listen to somebody tell me how to think, because I can do that myself. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree, and I think uh, a lot of people get held back by doing that. Because then it doesn't, not that it doesn't leave room for thinking, but I find that people don't question things as much if they have a consistent church that they're going to. It's just like, oh, that was what was said, and that is what we do, and that's that. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, not a lot of space for questioning. I think it's, I think it's important, don't get me wrong, like, I think... If you can go to church, you should go to church. If you're a Christian and you want to do that, of course. Um, that's what we're talking about. But um, that doesn't mean you absolutely have to or else you're going to go to hell and you're damned for eternity. Like, that's ridiculous. Um, but I think those. I think it's important because there are people that need it and that, they're, that they will have a really hard time by themselves without help to 
digest the information. Um, but with that being said, I think if they were being fed properly, then they would develop proper assimilation of the gospel and the word and to have a higher thought process to be able to understand it themselves. Um, like developing the palate. We kind of talked about that with babies. Um, so that's a different way to think about it as well. Like as a Christian or whatever, a religious person, whatever you're practicing, um, whenever you first start something, you're in, you're a baby, right? It's your first year of this new thing that you're doing. And babies don't eat hamburgers. You know, they don't eat meat necessarily. They're eating softer foods. They're drinking breast milk, things that are easy to swallow and to digest. But as you grow and develop into adolescence and then into adulthood, your palate changes, you grow teeth, you can chew things, you can swallow things, you have a you have digestion in your stomach that can help to digest solid foods like meat uh, and things that are harder to digest to digest like that. So that's relating to information. So like as a baby, you're getting fed easy information, right? Easy information, easy information. And then you should be developing and getting harder information as you grow in what, whatever way that you want to relate this conversation to it could be religious or business or whatever um, so you have to always continue to look for more information that's harder to understand and harder to digest so I think that's I think that's what the church should be kind of moving to and I think that's kind of the problem with the church is that it's always feeding people the milk and the easy digestible foods the easy information here's here's something easy for you so if you were feeding an adult milk all the time they're gonna have to come back multiple times a week because they're starving right so if you're starving for that information you're, all, you're constantly coming back and you're getting fed. You're malnourished. You don't have the information that you need to develop yourself further. And I think that's kind of one of the issues with the church and one of the issues that I have with the church is that that's what it does. It's not, it's not developing people into being able to digest that hard truth information that they need. Like... Yeah, that's a big problem I see. Yeah, I mean, and that's like a, I would say that's a new perspective for most people to view it as because I don't, I think people just see it as like, you go to church because that's what you're supposed to do and like, this person stands up front and talks and you sing some songs and like, then you walk away and you do it all over again next week. And they don't really think about like the depth that is or isn't there. And I think that comes back to the thing, like, with the questions. Like, then they're not really asking questions or, like, going further into their spiritual relationship. They're just stagnant in a way. Yeah. I. There's just so much that could be said about just, like, our, our consciousness, our thought process, our our ability within ourselves. You know, um, Christianity talks about um, Jesus being inside of us. Like, our body is a temple to hold the Holy Spirit. And that basically means that there's a part of God, His Spirit, that is within us. That's what we're born with. We have that, we have that intuition within ourselves. We just have to unlock it. 
I would say, yes, I agree. I would say that the intuition is unlocked as a child. And we, as a society, unlearn it. Lock it back up. And, uh, yeah, unlearn it. And that's part of, like, that's a huge issue, I think. Another huge issue I see, speaking of the temple, um, that's very much how I live and believe. Like, the body is a temple. You treat it well. You feed it, water it, respect it, do all the things as well as possible. Um, I don't see a lot, like, in the spiritual communities, I would say more so. I see people who are eating healthy and, like, truly respecting their bodies. But I would say with Christians a lot, it's very much there's a big disconnect there. Do you think? I mean, I would say that for most of society. See, I would say, like, in the, like, yoga realm, um, I would say a lot of people, at least the ones that I've always been around, like, they're juicing and drinking smoothies and eating salads, and maybe they're even vegan. They're probably even vegan at once. And uh, very much respecting their bodies on all levels. Mm. Like, they're very much more health-focused yeah. than your typical Christian. Like, when you walk into a church, there's donuts everywhere, and there's, like, a bunch of junk, candies, all the things. And, there's like, it's just a disconnect. Like, when you're practicing yoga and you're being a vegan or whatever you're doing... You're very much in tune and connected to your body. But one thing that, like, is hard for me with Christianity is, like, there's not really that solid ground of connecting to your body. Like, there is, like, with your kundalini yogas or just your any yoga um, type of thing. Like, you really have that experience of, like, connecting it's kind of based to... all through movement. Yeah, like, you're connecting to God or whoever you want to connect to through your body which kind of solidifies it on a deeper level than just like walking up into a church and sitting there for an hour and then leaving so that's what that's my there's a hump of my own like it's a struggle I'm like I don't understand because like you can have this truly spiritual experience of connecting through movement and breath and you're treating your body with respect on all levels and there's like so much substance there and then you go over here into like the realm of Christianity and like it just doesn't seem like there's a lot of like substance in that way <laughs> so like if you go from like yoga and like doing that type of experience to like Christianity it's like what do I do this is lame. I just sit here <laughs> And eat a donut? That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, shouldn't I be eating and tending to my body well and, like, truly connect to God through breath and movement? Maybe? Or no? No, that's wrong? Oh. No, you're a Satan worshiper. Whoops. Whoops, I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. You're practicing witchcraft? I'm gonna hide under the pew now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously I mean, yeah, that's like, a real that's serious yeah that doesn't make any sense yeah there's a there's a huge disconnect with that concept with christianity there's no like there's no talk of health no and like if your body's a temple does it say it in the bible does it say that specifically yeah that's like something that is very well known so like why is that not more prevalent in the church? It should be. And, like, that's the deep conversation that needs to be had. Yeah. With with Christianity specifically, I think. For sure. And I think, I mean, I don't know why people don't discuss it, but there are a lot of people who do not respect their bodies going to church. Uh, I would say more so than not. And uh, if you have somebody up front, preaching and like mentioning this like it would offend a lot of people and like turn people away from the church yeah and everyone's worried about making money yeah but yeah i mean just in christianity in general I, like that's something that i'm like i i don't understand yeah like you can judge 
somebody else for like not going to church or like doing whatever they're doing but like you ate a whole pack of oreos earlier yeah you you get pizza every friday and on tuesdays you get chinese food and then on sunday you go to church and eat your donut yeah like what (laughs) you're 50 pounds overweight it doesn't seem to align yeah so like i just don't i don't know like the temple thing like i find that's that's like if you keep a clear channel of your body and you respect it on all levels, can't you connect more easily to God because you are that clear channel and you are, like, exuding that respect? Yeah, for sure. So, like, wouldn't you want to, like, place an emphasis on doing that as a Christian if, like, that's your whole, like, thing is, like, connecting to God? Yeah, I think our body is like our vessel here in our realm that we live in. And, you know, this is a conversation that is kind of new to me. I've been learning, I've been listening to a lot of different stuff. (laughs) Um, So this could get weird, but um, like the body seems to be one of the most important things while we're here in this experience and I didn't used to think that, well, you know, I always thought that health was really important. Like, without our health, we don't have anything, like, obviously. But, you know, as a Christian, I believe that I'm going to have eternal life and blah, 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 whatever. Go to heaven and do the thing. Um, so, like, I know, I know that in my heart, so... My bot, and this is where I think Christians get confused in our conversation that we just had, was that, okay, I know that my body doesn't matter because my soul is going to live on eternally. So then that's like an excuse to treat my body badly because, well, it doesn't matter. I'm leaving my body behind anyways, and I'm going to go and be with God, and my soul is going to live forever, you know? Um so that's, I think, where that comes from, that excuse. That makes sense, yeah. yeah. It's like the, that's where that disconnection is like, yeah, hey, okay, it doesn't matter. Everything on this planet is doesn't just matter. temporary. Yeah. And it doesn't Which, matter. How do you feel about that, like, that belief? Statement. Yeah. Um, well, that's, I was kind of getting there. Sorry. Um, <laughs> kind of navigating through, <laughs> snaking. But um, <clears throat> so the body is this vessel. And it has far greater capabilities than we can even try to understand. And a lot of it has to do with light and like an overall consciousness. So being here in this experience is something that this person that I'm listening to calls um, a coordinate in consciousness. So we're not necessarily in a place or a certain time. We are a coordinate in consciousness. And that overall consciousness is God. And when God said in the beginning, let there be light, he was saying, let there be me. Let there be my consciousness. And he is the light of the world. And that's what the New Testament says about Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. And it says in heaven that you won't need the sun because God is your sun, God is your light. And in the beginning, let there be light. That is the the consciousness that is overlaid across this realm that we live in. And we all are part of that one body that one consciousness and we all get our own experience in that coordinate in consciousness and in order to really understand that we have to have a healthy mind a healthy body and a healthy spirit and that's where that trinity comes from and that's what we talk a lot about and if your body is tuned properly you operate on a higher frequency and when you can achieve that higher frequency, 
that that comes from our thoughts and our emotions so basically our realities in this simulation of our coordinate and consciousness comes from our thoughts and our emotions so if you have fearful thoughts and fearful emotions you're going to create that reality in your coordinate and consciousness but if you live in a way that you're exuding love and as what you're supposed to do as a Christian follow Jesus's teachings and live in the way that he lived you can literally elevate your consciousness to a certain degree to where just like Jesus had an aura around him people always say that oh, Jesus had an aura around him well he probably did like he he was on a higher frequency and he was he had an energy field around him like a tuning fork I was telling you earlier today like if he if somebody tunes like if we both have tuning forks or whatever I hit mine yours is going to start resonating with mine whether I touch yours or not it's going to start connecting with my sound waves off of me hitting my tuning fork so same concept applies to the human body if my human body can resonate a higher frequency like a tuning fork I can also start to get other people to match my pitch and that's the conversation that needs to be had in the church and to develop that concept and to understand what that actually means and to connect those three things the mind the body and the spirit because the body the body is this vessel that we're here and the body is the instrument that we can use to start to resonate with each other like that's that's it right there for sure I don't know what else to say <laughs> whoa <laughs> that's all you get to say yeah I mean yeah I uh, I think that is definitely something that is overlooked um, and that a conversation that needs to be had, but how do you think that conversation starts to be brought up? Take It would take time. Do you think that it would be, like, do you think that a lot of Christians would be receptive to that conversation, like, outside of the church? I think it would have... It would have to be done in the church, like by whoever the leader is, um, or it could even be from an outside figure, like someone to come in, talk to the conversation, to talk to the congregation. <laughs> Those words are very similar. <laughs> and uh, slowly develop that thought process. And again, this comes back to education and like what we are being taught in school uh, how we are developing our cognitive abilities our free thinking abilities our emotions you know how are all those things affected throughout our life to get us to the point where we're at to be able to understand these complex things because none of this should be simple I mean it is it sounds complicated but it's really not no. it's really super simple I mean, to, like, kind of dumb it down, essentially. Like, your body is important because your body, energetically, is a way for you to bring other people on board with what you are, like, resonating with, which would be Christianity. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, I think to dive into that even deeper... People, uh, there needs to be an emphasis on energy because people don't really think about or, like, take seriously energetic things. Oh, they're pumping caffeine all day, drinking my coffee, drinking my tea, or eating sugar. Or they just don't believe in energetic right. things. Yeah, I see. Um, and I think maybe that would be, like, a place to start, would be, like, to, uh, kind of incorporate more energetic uh, conversations so that then they can understand the connections that energetically take place. Yeah, I mean, I think that would 
be easily understood if people would be more connected to nature. Oh, for sure. Because the sun is a giant ball of energy, and it's, a, it's constantly sending us information, whether we even know it or not. Like, we're constantly adapting to the light cycles of this, this realm, and throughout the seasons, our body's changing. I mean, that's why we have the cold and flu season is because in that time frame, our body is adapting to the light cycles and we're, we're shedding, so to speak, things that we're supposed to be getting rid of in that time frame because yeah, like of a, the light cycles in nature. A detoxification process. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, again, the energy that comes from the earth, so we have electromagnetic frequencies, that we can connect to. We did some of that today. Beautiful day it was today. It was awesome. Oh yeah, we got some sun. Had our feet on the ground. It was amazing. You rolled in the snow a little bit. It was really cold. <laughs> um, but yeah, we got we got the electromagnetic frequency that's coming from the earth, and we can literally connect to that. It's called grounding or earthing, and it's a it's scientifically proven. Um, there's plenty of research out there to be read about it. Um. It promotes healing, uh, reduces inflammation, um, and like on an energetic level, it it really connects you and literally kind of electrically grounds you to the earth. Yeah, you don't need to like, I mean, you can look at the studies, but like if you just go out and do it, then you'll be like, oh yeah, okay. It works, clearly. I can experience this and feel this. Yeah, and it's like, it's an energy thing. And same thing with the sun and water like we get energy from the sun like whether people believe that or not it's true we we extract energy from the atmosphere through the air that we breathe and through the sunlight that we receive even on a cloudy day or even when you can't even see the sun that it's out you're still extracting that nutrition from the atmosphere um so there's a lot of energy that could be talked about and, you know, you could, you could uh, lay that out in a different way that could be more understandable. And, like, slowly, like I was saying earlier, feed them easily digestible things and slowly increase the complexity of the nutrients that you're feeding the person. So, like, slowly turning up the dial on yes. the radio. Yep, instead of, like... You know, you get in your car and you turn it on and you forgot that it was blasting and it's on like 50 or whatever and you're about to blow your eardrums out. Like, you know, you just slowly crank it up one click at a time. Um, and I think that's how we can see a big change happen in the church and in Christianity um, and even in all aspects of life. You know, this, that information doesn't only apply to religious things. It can apply to an atheist. It can apply to anybody in the world that wants to improve their health. Like that information that I was just talking about is crucial to understand because you can control your reality through your thoughts and your emotions. And when we understand that, that's whenever we can truly connect to God because we are basically doing exactly what Jesus was doing. So... We're kind of living the exact way that Jesus was doing. And it's like, oh yeah, that's what, that's what Christianity is. Okay, makes sense. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me. Um, I just think like kind of taking the information and seeing it from a slightly different perspective could do wonders for the perceptions that people have on it mm -hmm. from the outside. I think another thing, too, we talked about earlier was um, I think it's time in history that we reevaluate some of the texts that we are learning from. Um, and that even, even the Bible. Like, the Bible has been translated thousands of times. It's lost... It has lost a lot of its meaning, and especially if you're reading a certain version of the Bible. 
like I read the King James version. Um, Terrible, so hard to understand. <laughs> it's it's true. It's it's hard to understand, hard to decipher. Um, but it is the I believe to be the most um, accurate because the words in it are old, and they still hold their meaning. Because, like, I always go back to the creation story. Genesis 1, first chapter. Um, the first six, six days. And if you go into a, say, a, a New Living Translation, or a, uh, an easy-to-read version of the Bible, you lose so much context and very specific words that are used that mean certain things and then you read this easy version you do not get the same information they're, they're two totally different things because in my book it talks about the firmament it talks about separating waters from the waters um, it talks about the sun and the moon um, it uses very specific words um, and in other translations, those words get thrown out and they use other words that are easier to understand that go along with what society's being taught, pretty much. So over time, the Bible has lost 50% of its meaning. I think I saw that on one of my devotionals that um, the Bible used to contain like twelve over 12,000 words or something. And... Um, now it's only 6,000 so it's lost a lot of its information a lot of its luster and like its powerfulness because you know everybody wants it to be easy and understandable and that's just not how it is you know like a lot of the Bible comes from God um, people were like some people were like taken over by the spirit and like would write books. Um, other people were writing about their experiences, you know, watching Jesus and they told a story about it. Um, so like, I think that's very important to kind of know that um, because you can't be referring to a book that's like, I don't know lacking true information like it's it's lost it's lost some of its meaning so you have to be careful of like what you're reading and um what i was getting to was like there's certain we'll say influences that have been over time like centuries on christianity so where are we originating our beliefs from? Our paradigms, right? In the beginning of the show, we mentioned paradigms. I've recently destructed my paradigm. My paradigm has blown up, and I'm restructuring a new one. And this new paradigm that I'm restructuring, I've never experienced this before. I a whole new way of thinking and understanding the world and it's based in love and like not fear like there's no fear in the beliefs and in, in my paradigm that i am reconstructing currently fear has no hold fear has nothing so let's it. talk a little bit more about that to like provide more context so like what was your previous paradigm summarize it so i mean we can get into a lot of different things there um i don't know like we'll go we'll go to germ theory for example like i don't if you don't know what germ theory is it basically means that around every corner and every table or a doorknob there's a bug there waiting to get you sick and that's what the medical system was built on, that, you know, we're victims to germs. And you must sanitize everything. Yep, clean everything because there's a bug here 
and it's going to make you sick. And I recently learned that that's not true at all. Um, but I, I never really believed germ theory um, completely, but I understood what it meant and that I, I believed that there was some truth to it. Now I don't. I don't think there's any truth to it at all. <laughs> um, so that's based in fear, right? Around every corner, there's a germ waiting for you to get you sick. So you need to be in a fearful response because you have to be clean or else you're going to get sick and you're going to have to go to the hospital and you could die because you're unclean and there's a germ waiting for you. Um, so that's one. So that's fear. Um, and so before you go on, the opposite of that is terrain theory, which means like that you're building a healthy terrain of your body, tying it back to like treating your body as a temple and respecting it and like building up a healthy terrain to go out into the world and thrive. That goes, it's very empowering versus like, I'm going to die because I touched the door and there's a germ there type of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's back to the resonating field that we exude. Like if you have a healthy terrain, which is germs, you know, our microbiome, our these little microbes, bacterias yeah. and microbes that live on us in our ears and our eyes, our nose, mouth, armpits, hands, feet, like it's, they're all over us, inside of us, everywhere. And if you have a healthy terrain, then you're you're exuding a, a resonating field that is more powerful and you're not susceptible. Yeah, to it's like in germs. harmony. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, um, so go ahead. Second paradigm explosion. Uh well that's kinda of, that was one so uh, that was that's based in fear and yes. a victim mentality. Another victim mentality is uh, you're a victim to your genetics. That's what the medical paradigm is all about. That's what we, everybody believes. If you go out into the world and you talk to somebody about their health, first thing that they're going to say is, oh, yeah, you know, my blood pressure's high because my dad's was high and his mother's was high and so was his dad's and it just runs in the family. It's my genetics. Um, whatever health issue that they have, they blame it on their genetics and they can't do anything about it because they are a victim to their genetics. That's totally hogwash, totally wrong. Yeah, I mean, I I believe, like, genetics load the gun, but, like, lifestyle, environmental factors pull the trigger. So, like, certain things can influence certain genetic expressions within you, but it is completely based on your lifestyle, which is usually where the genetic, quote-unquote, genetic component comes in because a lot of families live in the same way and have the same lifestyle habits, and that's why you get the same things, not because of your genes, but because your lifestyle is the same. Again, thoughts and emotions. Yeah. If you have the same thoughts and emotions as the people that raised you, chances are you're going to have the same issues. Yeah, like you can break those cycles by changing your paradigm yeah it's a belief system yeah and that's exactly what i've been experiencing um so those are examples um and again that's that's important because we're talking about health we're talking about the body this is like important because everybody has a body everybody has health like these are fundamental laws that we need to understand yeah and everybody's here for a reason and like the statement of like Oh yeah, this doesn't. None of this matters because I know where I'm going or whatever the people say. Like, that's very. Uh, I don't know what the word is, but it's like taking, um, not taking. It's taking it for granted. Yeah, it's taking for granted the experience of life here, but it's also disrespecting the fact that you do have this experience in this life and this body to do amazing, wonderful things with. But you're not doing it because, like, I know where I'm going and, like, that's all that matters. But, like, right here, right now matters, too. Like, the only thing that really matters is the present moment. As long as you got everything else, like, as long as you're aligned in mind, body, spirit, like, the present is what matters. That's right. That's right. Living in the moment. Yeah. Um, 
to another recent thing that I was reading about, and this one's kind of more on the religious standpoint, but um, in Christianity, a lot of people refer to St. Augustine, um, and, you know, he was one of the original guys that kind of helped to push Christianity across the world, so to speak. But what most people don't know is that he had an adversary, and his adversary was named um, Pelagius. I think that's that's how I say it. I think it was spelled um, P A L E G I U S, Pelagius, something like that. And um, those two philosophers argued, and they were talking about Christianity. And St. Augustine was saying that because of Adam's sin and the fall of man, we are all doomed to evil. Like, we all are inherently evil. And that's our curse. That we, that's our burden to bear, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> and everybody loved that. The church loved that. And... What's that based in? Fear. Exactly. You are limiting your potential because you are, oh, you're evil. You're a sinner. You're inherently bad. You can't do anything about it. You're a victim. You're, you, should be, you should be fearful um, because you need grace from God to save you, which is still true. But how about this perspective from Pelagius? Pelagius was saying that your inherent will, your inherent will to grow into goodness is your burden. So how about that for a shift? So now your burden instead of sin is now pursuing excellence in your absolute best. That's your burden to bear. Not, oh, I'm a sinner and I sin every day and I I'm burned with this sin. And God, can you please help me with my sin? Like, yeah, of course. That's a fundamental thing. Like, we all make mistakes. We all sin. And, you know, I don't know everything about this topic, but I'm just talking about what my opinion is on this matter. Exactly. Um, but this is historical with these two philosophers and how St. Augustine was, he was pushed to the front and they ran with his story and the way that he promoted Christianity and his philosophy, and Pelagius was kind of pushed to the back, and he was uh, he was viewed as a heretic. Okay, so I've been kind of struggling with that, and because you know my paradigm with Christianity was like I'm a God fearing man, you know, the uh, I think Solomon says about um, the beginning of wisdom is fear in the Lord. And, you know, that's that's true to an extent, you know, because God is everything. You know, He is fear. He is love. His, all of those emotions come from Him. So, like, yeah, of course. But, like I was saying, with we have to, it's time to have a new interpretation of our texts that we're reading. This is what I was talking about, is this paradigm. Is that where are we getting this information from? Like St. Augustine, like, and, and fear. Like, if we look up the word fear, is were, were they saying that same word then? Like, was King Solomon saying the word fear that we know it to be now? Or was he saying a different word that meant something else in, the, in his time? And then now, in our Bible, we're interpreting the word into fear. And who, what what people were in charge of interpreting the language? Did they pick the word fear because they knew that it was manipulating and that it could alter somebody's consciousness to think a certain way? You know? Because I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist, so I got my tinfoil hat on for that one. But, like, these are things that I'm thinking about because my paradigm has totally shifted after reading that conversation in that book. And just thinking about all the things that I've been learning, it's just like, we can't,
be burdened with fear. I mean, you can't, love and fear cannot coexist. Yeah, like, in the same moment. Yeah, you can't fear somebody. Like, your reason for loving somebody cannot be fear. No. Like, that does not make sense. It doesn't add up. It, and yeah. Those, and, like, it's in the Bible. You know, you're supposed to work out your salvation through fear and trembling. Like, okay, yeah. Let's try to understand the context and, like, what that could mean. But, like, again, where are these words coming from? Like, does that, does the word fear now mean the same thing that it did thousands of years ago? I highly doubt it. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. Yeah. And did like, I say that right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, we have, we've had that conversation about, like, the God fearing Christian. And I don't, I think like you can't have like a true devotional relationship spiritually. If you are coming at it from a place of of fear, Mm -hmm. like that doesn't make any sense to me. Like you should be coming at it like devotion and divine connection spiritually, religiously, whatever comes from a place of love. There's no room for fear there. Shouldn't be. No. So, like, Christians, like, are very prideful of being the God-fearing Christian. And it's like, your foundation is, what it, like, it based in fear? That's a good you're question. You're living in fear? Were they just saying that? Like, like just it, to say just, it? It sounds good? Somebody that they knew that was famous said it? and Like, I just don't think that being somebody who's living like you're essentially living in fear like i fear god i fear like the act judgment i yes and sinning and all of the things i have these fears of these things and that is why like is that why people are going to church and like identifying as a christian because they're afraid of what happens if they don't yes and not doing the things out of a place of i love god so much that I want to show up every Sunday right. and connect deeper to him. Like, I don't think most people are doing that. I'm like, they're like, oh, what happens if I, when I die? Like, I don't, I want to be like on the right side or, oh, I'm going to be judged for this or that. So they're like this God fearing Christian. And it's coming from, like, it's not coming from a place. It's not genuine. Of true devotion. Mm hmm. It lacks it completely. So, yeah, I mean, we've had that conversation of, like, the God-fearing Christian. Because you've said before, like, you've believed that. I mean, I still think that there's truth to it. You know, it's it's a valid statement. But I think it needs dissected more. to Because, co- again, we have to have, we have to start having deeper conversations around this. We have to understand what fear means. We have to understand what love means. We can't just say these words and then be like, oh, I love mac and cheese. So good. I love it. Like, do you really love the mac and cheese or are you just saying it? Like, it reminds me of Anchorman. When, uh, what's his name? Uh, I forget. He talks about loving the lamp. Never seen it. Uh, Is it Rick? No, it's not Rick. I can't remember. It's Um, not a movie person over here. It's Rick. Yeah, Rick. Rick's like, I love lamp. Do you actually love the lamp, or are you just saying you love the lamp? Um, But yeah. (laughs) Anyways, we have to have deeper conversations about these emotions and understanding human psychology. Psychology is probably one of the most important things that we really need to get a grip on because there is currently a psychological warfare happening, and it's a spiritual warfare. And that spiritual warfare has been happening ever since Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. Um, So there's been a plan all along to fight that war. And it's recently, in my opinion, getting much worse. And we're constantly under attack with misinformation, deception, lies, delusion, hate, fear, control, all these negative things 
and we we can't <clears throat> we we have to see it for what it is <clears throat> and understand psychology because we're being played and i think if everybody can have these hard conversations and like the book that i read was called the mature mind and the whole concept was to grow into maturity not to grow into adulthood because if you grow you can grow into adulthood and still be a child like within your own thought process and basically this guy was saying that the root problem with our with society remember this was written in 1947 and he was already talking about all the things and he was saying that the root problem is that people their psychology is immature they don't have a mature thought process to again digest that complex nutrient nutrient like the meat to understand what's going on and if we can have a mature thought process then we can come together we can see our differences and we can have a better understanding of wholeness because a, a mature person never stops learning a mature person always seeks what's best for the greatest good they think about wholeness they see the whole picture they see all the linkages in the chain of beginning to end all of it they see the whole thing but a, an immature person is very egotistical they think about themselves they're very selfish they they compartmentalize everything they only look at one link in the chain or maybe a couple and they don't see the whole link they don't see the chains they, they don't see the the chain reaction of things and they're very like they, they they don't see wholeness they only see one thing they're very narrow viewed and that's basically what we're talking about here is like a narrow view narrow vision to not see the whole picture and like get a grander view of this religious conversation so that we can get everybody on the same page because something that we didn't even bring up yet was how within christianity there's like there's like i don't even know how many different churches there are there's so many different subdivisions of churches we got um first baptist first church of god uh wesley methodist uh, grace baptist grace community um Wethley, or I, forget, I think i said that one wrong. but there's a bunch of different ones yeah and it's like we can't even agree on the same thing we all have these different things why can't we all just be called the church or whatever like it's all the same thing we should all be saying the same thing because if we're not then it's like how can we get everybody on board if everybody is saying something different so how is somebody going to be like Oh yeah, I believe you, but I'm not going to believe all those other guys. Yeah. So it's like we're, we don't have any validity with what we're saying because we all have different views. Yeah, you're already so divided within just the uh, umbrella of Christianity that it's like from the outside looking in, you're like, okay, if you're not all on the same page, then like... Why should I believe you? Why are you not all on the same page? And how can you get like are you not you're not trying to get there you're just not on the same page that's interesting mm -hmm. because like if you if there's like division already created within christianity on like that big level then like why do i want to commit like how do i know where to come in to join if i wanted to like what's the right one i don't know how do you how do you know you just go talk to some random person. You just show up at the church and you're like, okay, here I am. And this is what I'm going to believe now. Yeah, it's really confusing, like isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't understand it. I, I really don't. I, I don't, don't see either. it. I mean, like, I don't know. I don't, that, there's just a lot of work that needs to be done in that. And I think, like what I was saying, there needs to be way more complex conversations had. And there needs to be a focus on the body. Yeah, and I think, like, health yeah health for sure and 
I think energy too, health and energy. Mm -hmm. um, but I just think uh, it's very interesting to talk about and observe it from various perspectives that like you you know that like these conversations aren't being had within the churches and probably can't be had in a lot of churches just because of the the egos and the attachments that people have to what has been so deeply ingrained into their beliefs. Like, a lot of people are not willing to question or have conversations because by doing so, then that they're, like, holding so tightly to that identity of, like, this is who I am and this is what I believe. That, like, there's no room for questioning or growth. And uh, I think that, like, without that, it's only preventing more people from coming into that space or being interested in that space which everybody is always like gotta get more people to the church like come back if you come once like oh you gotta come back but like at the core if you come back and you like ask questions or like don't like follow how things are ran then it's like you're a burden and you're wrong and like a problem Oh, you'll see. Just, just give it a year. Yeah. So it's like very. You'll get, you'll get indoctrinated soon, honey. Yeah. yeah. Just wait a while. Right. So it's very um, confusing to like a person who, I mean, I like has not does not have like that identity as a Christian to like observe it. Mm hmm. And I think that the only way to, like, bridge those gaps is to uh, be more open to questions and conversations on both ends. But I think it takes, like, the two people have to be completely on board with that. And They're tough conversations. They are. Like, we've been through it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with some of the conversations <laughs> we've had. Right? Yeah, I was trying to think of something funny to say, but yeah, yeah. I won't say it. <laughs> <clears throat> You're going to tell me later. Maybe. Together now. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, like, they're not, it's not like a fun, like, easy conversation, but I think it comes back to, like, the thing that we talk about so much, but we haven't mentioned yet um, in this episode, communication. And, like, being able to eloquently communicate and truly listen to the person that you're communicating with. Not just waiting to respond with a rebuttal. Yeah. No matter what you say, I already have a, I already have a rebuttal. Exactly. I could I'm be, not listening. I could, I'm not listening. Right? See? There. That's. I mean, that's what happens a lot. Mm -hmm. I could be like telling you something like, oh, this is what I believe. X, Y, Z, A, B, C, whatever. And like the whole time you're sitting over there and you're thinking like, I'm going to say this. This is right. This is the truth. And this is the way. And I know it. And that's all I'm saying. Like, you're not truly listening. You are just trying to prove to yourself and to the other person that you're quote-unquote right. Right. And that's what we don't want to do. No. We don't want to be trying to prove who's right and who's wrong. Like, and trying to push our beliefs onto other people. Like, because, again, we're not meeting people where they're at. And that just creates a further divide. And... We have to learn how to have those conversations and figure figure that out. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, that's, I think that's the only way to bridge the gap on yeah. a small scale. Mm -hmm. Because, like, by us doing this, it comes back to the energetic thing of, like, being able to do that with people around us, too. Yeah. Um but I think also kind of to sum everything up here that uh, the the relationship thing and, you know, if you're struggling with these same things that we kind of talked about, you know, Christianity or whatever your religion is or whatever thing that you're doing, um, trying to connect to God in some way, 
and people in your life aren't on board with you and you are you're upset that they're not and like you obviously you want them to be like you know we all want the best for everybody and you know we believe that there is a god there is a higher power and that you know we have we have to believe that's a core value that we have and a belief system that needs to be spread to everybody and I have something to say over there go ahead go ahead um <laughs> yes but go ahead so like if you also want people to be on board with you in your endeavors of believing in the higher power and following a specific path then maybe bring up these conversations that we had in the podcast like talk about fear and love and talk about um the body and health and how you know we can be on higher frequencies and resonate with each other and lead by example and all these things don't try to belittle somebody because they're not doing what you're doing you know because that person thinks what they're doing is okay you know so again you have to meet them where they're at and um be helpful, encourage, and try to get them to empower themselves. You know, self-discovery is really important. Um, no one, you can't change people. People have to change themselves. It's a decision that they make within themselves, with their own psychology, their own thoughts and feelings. Um, so just keeping that in mind and and I already mentioned it, but, you know, with me and Amanda, we're like, we're trying to use this difference that we have, the way we articulate things, to really reach a max amount of people. And we feel like that's a strength now. And that's something that we can really come together with and achieve. And, you know, we'll probably have to continue to work on it. But, you know, that's something that we've recently figured out and recently worked on. So you can try that with whoever you're with or experiencing that. Um, but yeah, go ahead. I don't remember what I was going to say. but <laughs> Something about God? I don't know. God. But I was, because I was truly listening to you that it just went away. And I have, I struggle with that so much, like. I'll listen to somebody, and then they'll say something, and I'm like, oh, I want to say this. And then I keep listening, and I'm like, wait, what was I going to say? Yeah. Yeah. That's what happens when you truly listen, and you're not, like, holding on to, like, I'm saying this. I must say this. But, um, yeah, I think, like, it's not, so, like, if you're dealing with an, a relationship, or you're in some type of relationship where this is happening, understanding... And maybe, like, recognizing that both of you... So, like, you're both on, like, opposite sides. And, like, I always describe it as, like, okay, you need to come over to my side a little bit. Like, you don't have to do anything you don't like or you're uncomfortable with. But, like, there are certain... There are a lot of common ground. There are more things that we are both, like, on board with and open to than not. For sure. So, like, you need to come over here with me for, like my things but like then I'm I will come over here with you for like your things and like that kind of allows us to like more harmoniously meet in the middle with a lot of things because we have a lot of the same like core beliefs I would say and uh we just say a lot of things differently and there are some things that we believe differently for sure but um recognizing that just because maybe somebody isn't 100% the same way that you are doesn't mean that they're not saying the same thing. Or that they're wrong. Yeah, or that they're wrong. Um, yeah, and just, like, doing your thing. And, like for, like, for us, the things that you would say to me, like, I listen to them and, like, I think I take them away and I, like, think about them. But, like, unless it's something that truly resonates with me, like, I'm not going to alter what I'm doing, like, for you. 
I would alter what I'm doing for myself. So like not altering what you're specifically doing that you like and that you gain value from for somebody else, but doing it like for yourself. Because if you do it for somebody else, then eventually you're going to build up that like resentment of like, you made me stop doing this thing. Or like, I quit doing this thing for you type of thing. So like just keeping clear of like, okay, like I took what you said to heart and like thought about it and like, okay, yeah, maybe that does make sense. So I'm going to do that because that makes sense for me. And not because like, I think they're taking ownership. Yeah. There are a lot of ways to like harbor resentment in this, these circumstances. So like always coming back to like yourself and listening there first, but also being really open to whoever you're experiencing this with. That's right. Do unto others as you would want done unto you. There you go. And that's the golden rule. And with that, I think that's a wrap. And thanks for listening to the Holy Health Podcast. Yeah. For more information, go to IamHolyHealth.com and we will see you next week. Thanks for listening. Bye.